All right, top of the morning, you know what this is, you know who this is, and you know how we do. Big Rich, Mob Story Season 2, Business Time. I know we've been around for a while. I know other mob channels got my name in their mouth. We'll discuss this as the future unfolds. Let's not get excited. Gentlemen, you know the routine. Wipe your feet on the rug, blow some smoke in the air. Let's get down to business. Now, just, what was it? Only a couple of weeks ago, we were celebrating Sonny Francesa's 103rd birthday. Some people say 101. Some people say 103. It's all good. The man lived a long life. Unfortunately, Sunday night, he did pass away. We were not able to put up anything due to the system being fried, but it's okay. Now we have time to pay our respects. Let's get right into business from the button guys at New York Mafia. R.I.P. Sonny Frances. Sonny Frances had passed away. He died this past Sunday, February 23rd, late at night in his sleep. A quiet, serene ending for a man whose life was anything but. Born February 6, 1917, as Giovanni Carmine Frances, or Sonny, as he was commonly called by his mom and dad since he was a kid, was a pivotal figure in New York City who will not soon be forgotten. Federal and local law enforcement in the various newspapers and tabloids across America knew him as one of the most notorious, powerful, and deadly mafioso to ever walk the streets of New York. Even now, in death, his obituary and life's exploits are being splashed across the internet and newspapers across America. Sonny was always big news, but his family and close friends knew him as a warm, engaging guy who always made you feel special. He had a friendly, approachable demeanor, a warmth and dry wit humor that belied what was commonly written about him. Whether you were simply a young kid or a seasoned adult, hobo or head of state, he would treat you with respect and friendliness and immediately endeared you to him. His life started back in a little town called Palma on the outskirts of Naples in the Campania region of Italy. Mob lore has it that he was actually born on the ship that carried his mother, father and siblings to America. Regardless, he was a baby when he hit American shores. His large family settled into Greenpoint, Williamsburg section of Brooklyn. Stand up. A largely immigrant Italian area. His father, Carmina or Carmine, was an early feared camorista, well known in the neighborhood, who ostensibly owned a bakery and a tavern by trade. He called it Turido di Leone or Turi the Lion. But the story that has been written is not about his notorious underworld life. This dialogue is about the man himself, his personal life, the one that the media and those in law enforcement don't look at or care about. At a failed first marriage that produced three children, he divorced and married an attractive young woman named Tina. Together they would raise seven kids, Sonny's three kids, a kid Tina had from an earlier marriage, and the three they would have together. They first moved to a small, modest home in Franklin Square in Long Island, and within a few years, by early 1961-62, they relocated to a home more befitting his growing position and success, a beautiful colonial-style home in the prestigious community of Hamilton Park in Tony Roslin. He would live the American dream in suburbia, but their life was anything but typical. He was under a near-constant surveillance and scrutiny by various police agencies, and it understandably took a terrible toll on his fledging family brood. Sonny would fall hard by the late 1960s, having beaten multiple investigations that produced serious indictments against him. The law finally nailed him for arguably the single offense he never committed or had anything to do with. The FBI used a lineup of miscreants, dope fiends, and lowly street urchins, disreputables that would make any normal person throw up. They testified that Sonny did this and Sonny did that to save their own hides from federal bank robbery charges. The FBI knew it, but they used them anyway. In fact, the feds and prosecutors are the ones who put the words into their mouths that they spoke in the first place on the witness stand. His was a railroad job all the way. Sonny was convicted, and that was that. He got 50 years in Leavenworth, two 25s running wild. He would go in to serve only nine of those years because of old sentencing guidelines. He was released in late 1978, finally hitting the streets and returning to his family, which had been devastated by his nearly decade-long absence. Many in both law enforcement and underworld were shocked by his release because many thought they would never see him again. 
but it didn't matter anyway. Because over the next 40 some odd years, the FBI would make sure to violate him for the smallest of infractions at least six more times. Keystone comical infractions that often defied any sense of decency or fair play. But nobody was laughing except the FBI and federal prosecutors who gloated and basked in the media glory every time they would violate him. To be named in the same articles as Sonny Friend says was a surefire career booster for many a Fed. They basically threw the Constitution into a garbage pail where Sonny was concerned. He would end up serving over 40 years in various prisons in total, and his family would be torn apart in more ways than can be imagined, or I care to describe here in this article. He always kept his chin up. He had way too much pride to ever admit defeat or acknowledge the pain of it all. I imagine Sonny is up there right now talking to God and Jesus, trying to explain what's what and why he lived his life the way he did. But that's between him and his creator. It'll unquestionably be the most important sit-down he ever had in his life, or death, as it were. And to be sure, Sonny was great at sit-downs. He had honed his mafioso skills through the decades and knew the rules of this life better than nearly anyone. But the rules of the life are a bit different from the rules of life. So I imagine he may get a bit uncharacteristically tongue-tied this time around. It's not for any of us mere mortals to cast dispersions or make judgments about anyone's actions in their lives, whether it be Sonny Francis or anyone else. For as the Bible says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. I like to say don't throw rocks if your hands are dirty. If he should get lucky and win the table, maybe they'll give him his old regime back. He was the last of his crew to pass on, so he's got all the boys hanging around up there waiting for him. I imagine they got a game of Zignetti going already, and a hot pot of espresso is steaming at that big members-only private social club in the sky. Angels with dirty faces, to be sure, were named Little Joey, Tony the Gawk, Johnny Irish, Jojo, Charlie Monk, Freddie Red, Tootie, Larry Bacala. Bobby Green, Black Sam, Frankie Camp, Mimi, Philly Cigars, Big Funzy, Whitey, Red, Nufio, Big Jerry, and a whole bunch more. There are a bunch of guys more colorful than any characters Damon Runyon could have ever dreamt up. Neighborhood kids who had banded together to try to become something more than what the cards of a harsh life had dealt them. Depression-era children who had seen themselves born into poverty reserved for a few. God bless him, and may God have mercy on all their souls. Great article. Salute to the button guys at themafia.com. And uh, rest in peace to one of the oldest OGs to make it. The feds did him dirty. We all know that. And, and especially, you know, with his family and the way his sons did him. But again, this is a great man. I want everybody to have a good Thursday morning. Uh, like I said, we will be fixing the system throughout the week. New mixer coming in tomorrow, et cetera, et cetera. But I just want to take this opportunity to thank all the donators. If it wasn't for the donators, we wouldn't have been able to get a new computer. We wouldn't have been able to new order a new camera. We wouldn't have been able to order the new mixer yesterday. So for those that donate, you can look at the banner. The PayPal is up there. The Cash App is up there. Anybody that feels like helping us out to help us keep going, you hit me up right there. You let me know who you are. And, of course, in the next Mob Story, I'm going to give you a shout-out. Everybody else, have a great day. Thank you very much. And, again, to all the supporters, to all the viewers, to all the subscribers, to those who like, to those who share and made us what we are. And we're growing. I haven't been on for a week, and our numbers are still going up. Salute to everybody, and have a good morning.